Hey everyone, and shout out to the contributors to True North News. I really appreciate you folks and all that you do to push back against the narratives, against the political propaganda, espoused by not just the hacks in the CBC, but from many others who represent the media establishment in this country. Like I say, thank you very much for all you do to counter their narrative and give Canadians an alternative perspective. I, for one, greatly appreciate it. Headline out of True North, Gordon, Trudeau government tells Canadians to believe CBC to tell them what fake news is as state broadcaster makes fake news. The CBC published false information on tech giants censoring conservative individuals and information. This is an opinion piece submitted by Graham Gordon, July 23, 2019. Minister of Democratic Institutions, a Soviet-style moniker devised by the Trudeau government, Karina Gold recently espoused confidence in the state broadcaster, the CBC, to mother Canadians by telling them what information they can and cannot believe. Now, many in the establishment of this country will reflexively roll their eyes when someone claims the CBC is a state broadcaster. You mean public broadcaster. They say pedantically, as if simply calling it so makes it so, despite a mountain of evidence showing otherwise. As I and my True North colleagues have pointed out countless times before, Many supposedly nonpartisan government institutions and third parties are impartial in name only. The CBC is another glaring example. Let me just give my own little round of applause here to Graham. Well done. I couldn't agree more. Shortly before Gold tweeted CBC's biased article on fake news, which propagated the childish notion that the dark arts of disinformation only comes from the right of the political spectrum, the CBC itself published false information on tech giants censoring conservative individuals and information. When U.S. President Donald Trump held a social media summit with right-wing influencers, journalists, and pundits to discuss big tech censorship, the CBC News Network had a Washington Post journalist on its program to make spurious claims that those invited are racist, only citing investigative journalist, Trump supporter, and muckraker James O'Keefe as an example of such a far-right character being in attendance. The CBC host, likely out of ignorance and confirmation bias, unquestionably agreed with this leftist journalist slander. Following O'Keefe's work exposing left-wing government organization and NGOs for years, I'm equated with his work and reputation. Although he is at times fairly partisan in his work, he's not one promoting racism. Yet the CBC presented that lie as fact while dismissing the mountain of evidence piling up that shows the big tech companies are left-wing dogmatists who target conservatives and their ideas. Ironically, O'Keefe's undercover journalist outfit, Project Veritas, has been leading the coverage in exposing the censorship of conservative thinkers and their ideas by getting undercover journalists to infiltrate these companies with hidden cameras. Others invited to Trump's social media summit are undoubtedly controversial figures, and leftist organizations and media have attempted to smear them as far-right. But for CBC to dismiss them all as a basket of deplorables and to deny that internal memos and reports from mainstream publications have shown apparent political bias at companies like Twitter, Facebook, and Google. The latest example of such bias happened on the heels of Trump's summit when Canadian free speech advocate Lindsay Shepard was banned from Twitter while the trans woman that initially attacked her online remained unpunished. The virtual silence from Canadian political leaders on both sides of the political aisle, except the People's Party of Canada leader Maxime Bernier, on this issue is extremely concerning and noteworthy as they appear to be too fearful to call out the very powerful tech companies. When the state broadcaster dismisses real internet censorship as a right-wing conspiracy theory and the Liberals in power defer the CBC as the go-to source for determining what is and isn't real news, Canadians need to start questioning the reliability and honesty of the so-called public broadcaster. This is the same news outlet that just whitewashed Trudeau's former principal secretary and best friend Gerald Butts returning to the liberal fold less than six months after resigning in the midst of the SNC-Lavalin scandal, where there may have been obstructions of justice as merely the band coming back together. The political media power complex in Canada is very closely aligned, which means Canadians cannot trust them to tell them the honest truth. Well said, Graeme. Well said indeed. And that's why it's so vitally important for people like myself to continue to offer different perspectives and alternative sources of information to help push back against these leftists, these authoritarian collectivists who now are rampant throughout the bureaucratic institutions and the media landscape in this country. It's a difficult task, no doubt. 
I mean, the CBC, Canada's state broadcaster, has the capacity and the ability to force the Canadian taxpayers, or the unborn at this point, to subsidize and pay for their outfit and make sure that they're economically compensated or rewarded no matter what they do. When you're in a position such as that, yeah, it's very difficult for people like myself or anyone else there in the alternative media sphere or who are offering the Canadian people alternative source of information or perspectives. It's very difficult for us to compete with these behemoths that have the full force of government at their disposal. I can't speak for everyone, but I, for one, love a good challenge, which is why I continue to do what I do. But I really do need your support and your help to help spread my information, to share my channel with others, to like, subscribe, and comment so that we actually get our information out there to at least a substantial degree in order to assure that the Canadian people are at the very least getting multiple perspectives so that they can at least make a better informed decision rather than just relying on lies or rhetoric or political propaganda by those who represent the media establishment in this country. They may continue to try to silence and suppress our voice, but mark my words, folks, they're going to definitely fail in that endeavor. It's a Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.